Thank you very much, Professor Donner. Thank you also to the EHA committee for selecting our abstract for this press briefing. Uh, we will show the com comprehensive data this afternoon in the CLL session, but I will give a brief summary of the key data um, of this uh, um, study uh, in the next few minutes. These are my disclosures. So the main aim of uh, this report is to report on the long-term efficacy and safety of uh, venetoclax in combination with obinutuzumab in patients with previously untreated CLL. And uh, the focus is really to understand the long-term implications of this approach. So just as a reminder of the study setup of CLL-14, so we showed the data in 2019 um, for the first time when we had the primary readout of this study. Basically, we enrolled in this study between 2015 to 2016, 432 patients who all had previously untreated CLL, so chronic lymphocytic leukemia, our most common type of leukemia here in, in Western Europe and we uh, randomized them to either receive venetoclax in combination with obinutuzumab or chlorambucil in combination with obinutuzumab. Basically, a fixed duration chemo immunotherapy versus a fixed duration targeted therapy. And all of these patients had coexisting conditions, so this was the main inclusion criteria. The patients had to be unfit, meaning that they had to be not fit enough to receive more intensive chemo immunotherapy than chlorambucil obinutuzumab. So therefore, this study population consisted largely of elderly unfit patients and the primary endpoint of this study was progression-free survival. And we showed in 2019 that the progression-free survival is significantly longer after venesoclax obinutuzumab compared to chemo monotherapy, thereby setting really a new standard of care for patients with, uh, with previously untreated CLL. And so we kept the study open and we are still tracking the survival and the remissions of our patients and still doing also a lot of accompanying scientific research in these patients. And we plan to continue the follow-up also until next year. So we will have really a robust data set with this approach. And now the median observation time is 76.4 months, so over six years of observation. And bearing in mind that this is a fixed duration treatment, this also means that the patients are now all off treatment for more than five years. So we really have the chance now to observe how the disease evolves and how our patients are performing uh, without any therapy and thereby understanding the long-term implications of this approach. And I'll just summarize three key findings um, and, or three key endpoints of this study. First of all, of course, the primary endpoint, progression-free survival. And here you can see that um, the uh, majority of patients are still in remission after venetoclax obinutuzumab. So the upper curve um, uh, indicates the progression-free survival in the venetoclax obinutuzumab arm, and the red curve indicates the progression-free survival of the patients who received chlorambucil obinutuzumab. And importantly, what's again here important to bear in mind that the, all patients stop treatment um, after month 12 in both arms, and you see that the most of the patients after venetoclax obinutuzumab are still in remission, but we have reached now for the first time in these um, uh, follow-ups that we do we, tr we try to do every year um, the median progression-free survival, which is 76.2 months, and at six years, the PFS rate is still 53.1%, which is significantly longer than what we've seen with chlorambucil obinutuzumab. What you also looked at is the time to next treatment. So time to next treatment here is defined as death from any cause or initiation of a next line of treatment. And CLL, as you know, is an, an indolent kind of non-Hodgkin lymphoma. And therefore, when patients relapse, in most cases, we do not need to treat them. We manage them with watch and wait. And therefore, time to next treatment really indicates how symptomatic were these progressions eventually. And you can see that over 60% of the patients at year six did not require a next line of treatment, um, even, the, even though they have been without any therapy for more than five years. So this demonstrates also the clinical efficacy of this approach um, that allows patients to remain in a treatment-free remission for several years after end of treatment. Also worth um, uh, mentioning that we, the median age of the patients when they were enrolled in this to the study was 72 years. So the current median age of the patient population is 77. So we are now really have a very old patient population that is still benefiting from a treatment-free period, even though they are with Without any uh, active CLL specific treatment. And then finally, here just um, a summary of the overall survival data. So we do see um, initially in the first readouts, we saw that the curves were superimposable, meaning that there were no, no clear difference. Now, even though it is not statistically significant, as the um, significance threshold was um, uh, just missed with 0.052, we do still ba see, based on the hazard ratio and also the number of um, uh, events, that there seems 
seems to be a trend towards the benefit after venetoclaxo benutuzumab in terms of overall survival, especially, and I will show this later today in the in the CLL session, if we look at the CLL-related mortality, we see that um, we have less than half of the CLL-related deaths in the venetoclax arm compared to chlorambucil benutuzumab, suggesting that if we use the more effective approach early in the front line, uh, we can um, provide patients with a long-term benefit with, with by using a BCL2 inhibitor in the frontline setting. So let me um, just quickly sum up the key findings. Um, so this follow-up confirms the long-term clinical efficacy of this approach of venetoclax obinutuzumab, which is now also approved in, in Europe for several years in the frontline treatment of CLL. We see that five years after treatment completion, the majority of patients is still in remission after venetoclax obinutuzumab, and over 60% did not require a next line of treatment. And therefore, we see that across all the different subgroups that we analyzed, all patients with previously untreated CLL seem to benefit from venetoclax open